Welcome to New Life Alliance Church, y'all. Let's stand and praise the Lord today. Into marvelous light I'm running, out of darkness, out of shame. By the cross you are the truth, you are the life, you are the Father, we love to dwell in your presence. We love to declare that you are the truth, you are the life, and you are the way. Father, I would pray that your spirit would fill this place to overflowing. Father, that you would touch our hearts, challenge our minds, 
that in this very place, this very day, we have an encounter with the living Christ. Yes. Yes. Humble ourselves before you, declaring your majesty. There is no one greater than you. We love you. And we honor you. Father, even this moment, I, I think of Melinda Machado's in the doghouse, Father, and I uphold her before you. I uphold her physical well-being, Father, before you. And Father, I would pray that you might continue the good works that you've begun in her life. And Father, that the light of Christ would shine brightly within her, Father, into her family and her children, to those that are around her. Father, may the light of Christ, may the patience of Jesus, may the kindness and the gentleness, the forgiveness, may the love shine from her. May she be a living testimony of what God can do in the midst of someone's life. And Father, may she bring you honor and glory in all that she says and all that she does. We uphold her before you in the name of your Son, the name that is above all names, Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah. In his name, amen. God bless you. You may be seated in his presence. Hey, check this out. There's no kids moment today, so we're just gonna go right back into life So let's ride! Defeated the king. 
Romans 3.23. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But Father, you brought down your Son who lived the sinless life, a lamb without blemish who was sacrificed for the forgiveness of sins, the atonement. Father, we thank you for the substitutionary atonement of your son. Jesus, we thank you for your obedience. Holy Spirit, may you just come in this place, fill our hearts, change hearts, Speak through our pastor today. May we leave changed. In your name we pray. Amen. Colossians chapter 3, living as those made a life in Christ. Since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in life as you once lived. But now you must also rid yourselves of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Here, there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. Therefore... As God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly, and you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Instructions for Christian Households. Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as it is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. Fathers, do not embitter your children or they will become discouraged. Slaves, obey your earthly masters in everything and do it not only when their eye is on you and to carry their favor, but sincerity of heart and reverence for the Lord. Whatever you do, work it out with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters, 
since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ our sin. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Anyone who does wrong will be repaid for their wrongs, and there is no favoritism. God bless the reading of the word. Amen, brother. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Brother Jess, appreciate it, man. Thank you. Colossians 3. Mr. Lead Elder, appreciate him. Let him know you love him. Love you, man. You're awesome. We're going we're gonna to continue in our trek through uh, Colossians. That was Colossians 3. And so Paul's kind of making a transition here uh, from, from the more doctrinal kind of stuff in the first and second chapters, kind of where he declared the supremacy of Christ and warned us about some false teachers. And now he's getting into some things that are a little bit more practical. Now, I like practical. The believers that he would be addressing, they would, they would have a lot of knowledge. They would have a lot of differing philosophies. They would have a lot of thoughts on God, and they were all kind of getting mixed up. Many thoughts that were going on in the church would be a bit skewed and not quite right. Well, many people today have an understanding of God that's a little bit skewed. Not quite right. This is why... Biblical doctrinal teachings are so good. This is why Bible study is so good. Solid foundations are essential. Solid foundations are important. For this is what we build upon. Lest you get deceived. Lest you build upon a foundation that is built on sand. And I'm a life application preacher. So kind of what does that mean? That means I like to apply the doctrinal understandings and the beliefs to everyday life. I need to know the practical stuff. I need to know what it means to me. How do I apply something that was taught 2,000 years ago into my life? And does it even have meaning and significance? You know, so what Noah? So what Moses did? So what King David was? So what? What does that, what does that mean to me? Unless it means I'm a person like them. A people, then maybe I can apply some of the principles of what God is saying and has done and is doing and is still doing. I have seen way too many people that have all the right kind of doctrine, but they don't live it out. Anybody else? Oh, they can say all the right words, but they don't live it out. They know all the terminology. They may have even been raised up in the church. They know all the Christianese, but they don't live the life. There are times when I get on the golf course. I know how to play golf because I read all the books. I've watched the videos, seen them on TV. You know where I'm going, seen them on TV. Listen, I'll even go out and get the right clothes. Got the right kind of shoes. Got the right kind of shirt. Right? Got the hat. I look good. Got the right glove. Make sure I buy the right clubs. I read all about the proper golf ball to have. So I can get the club. I can get the golf ball. Tee it up. And listen, I've read all about having the right mindset. Having all the right swing thoughts. I can envision exactly what the ball's going to do. I can practice my routine. I can get up and address the ball. And I'll go nice and straight, right down the... And swing, baby! Woo! Right into the water. But I have all the knowledge. I know all the rules. Know the terminology. Well, now I'm hitting three. Right? Knowledge of the game is not playing the game. Knowledge of the Bible is not living the Bible. And this is where a lot of people get separated out. Have the knowledge, 
they're not living it. See, looking the part, it's not living the part. I learned how to be a pastor by being a pastor. I learned how to be a husband by being a husband. I'm still working on that one. 31 years later, right? That's a, that's a book in the writing, right? Listen, you learned how to be a parent by being a parent. You can read all the books you want about being a parent until you're a parent. So here's your first one. You can't just read the book. You have to live the life. You can't just read the scriptures. You have to do what they say, right? You can't just read about being a black belt. You can't just read about how to fly a plane. Theory only gets you so far. Doctrinal understanding and correct theology is a good foundation, but it only gets you so far. Because it becomes time for application. It becomes hands-on Christianity. James would say it this way. Do not merely listen to the word. And so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Paul states, so then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is. Seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Here's your next one. We have to set our focus. We have to set our focus. And just to remind everyone that what, what Paul's writing about here and who, who is he addressing, he's addressing believers. I got any believers in here today? Some of you just thinking about it? Some of you read the book, but you're not sure how to live the life. I got any believers in here that want to live the life? Well, see, that's who Paul's addressing. He's talking to those that have been, and I'll use his words, raised up with Christ. Those that have been. The last chapter he talked about those that have claimed Jesus as their Lord. Now he's saying those that have been raised up with Christ. Is that you? Then it applies to you. It applies to each of us. So we're going to have to set our focus on things above. Those that have been raised up with Christ have their minds set on things above. They have their hearts set on things above. Now listen, you ever heard this? For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Do you know that that's scriptural? For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. It comes out of Matthew 6. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on the earth, where moth and vermin destroy, where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and thieves cannot break in and steal. Listen, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. We must learn to readjust our focus, especially towards the things above. If you've been raised with Christ. See, that particular passage in Matthew does not say where your heart is, there your treasure will be. No, no, no. It says where your treasure is, there your heart will be. See, nobody cares about the price of IBM stock until they put some money in IBM stock. Did you see it? Did you catch it? See, nobody really cares about who won the lotto until you buy a ticket. Understand? Where your treasure is, there your heart goes, right? And what I could do with a hundred million, right? And you start all these big dreams. I'll tithe it, Lord, I promise. Let's make sure we're placing our hearts and our treasures and our focus in the right place because our emotions are going to follow where we put our treasures. Where are you treasuring? Things of the earth? Jesus would be pretty clear. Paul's pretty clear. Set your minds on things above, not on things of this earth. If 
you're thinking about all this, and this is all the worry, and this is all the stress, and this is all the anxiety, and this, that's all the stuff of the world. Yeah, welcome. When I soaked the scriptures, just in those first few passages, it, it jumped out at me. I saw the past, I saw the present, and I saw the future. Just in the verses. I saw the past. Since you have been raised with Christ. This is something that's already been done. This is something that you've already claimed as a believer. It says, I am saved. I am born again. I am rejuvenated. I am baptized. I do claim Lord as my Savior. I have taken communion in remembrance of Him. These are things I have done. And if you have been raised with Christ, you've done this. You've been there. God revealed Himself to me many, many years ago. Saved a long time ago. How about you? This is something that you have done. See, the work of the Holy Spirit of God has been at work in my life a long time. Has He been at work in your life a long time? See, you've gotten to the point of salvation and then you moved and you've grown down the road. You've gone down the road. See, this is an accomplished task. This is an accomplished, it's finished. Your salvation is secure. It is done. You have been raised with Christ. It's done. It is finished. If you claim the Lord as your Lord and Savior, it's over. It's done. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. That is a, right? I have been raised. That's, I did that years ago. Filled out the card. Got the t-shirt. Checked the box. You know, did what, all the stuff that's required. Said the magic prayers. What, you know, all the stuff that kind of secures you in your freedom. And I believe the Holy Spirit comes upon you and fills you. You've been raised. Now what? <laughs> now what? Yeah, did that. Now what? Check the box. Said the magic prayer. Now what? Believe in Jesus. Now what? See, now set your hearts on things above. Set your minds on things above. This is present tense. Jesus is not in the manger. Jesus is not on the cross. Jesus is not in the tomb. He is in his glorified state right now, seated at the right hand of God in all his majesty and all his glory. Where are you looking? Set your minds on things above. This is where we focus. This is where we cast our gaze. Where he is. This is the right now. This is the right here. Jesus interceding for us now. Jesus advocating for us on our behalf now. Jesus preparing a place for you right now can I get an amen for Jesus amen. Jesus is still at work even now see the work on earth accomplished the work on earth finished the work on earth completed set your eyes on things above where he is we are saved we are rescued we are redeemed we are accepted and adopted as His children. We are secure in our eternal existence with God. This is who we are now. This is the assurance of the walk that we have now. Our past is forgiven. Our past is forgotten. Our present is active and alive and working itself out. Does anybody believe that God is actually at work in you, in your life, right now. This is present. Our lives, a living testimony of what God is doing. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died. And your life is now hidden in Christ. Isn't that amazing? 
God views you through the lens of Jesus Christ and His holiness and His righteousness. Praise be to God. Now listen, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Verse 4, when Christ who is your life appears, then you will also appear with Him in glory. That's a future tense. We're going to appear with Him in glory. Christ is our future. We have been raised up with Him in our salvation. We are declared dead. And we are now hidden in Him. And then the day shall come. Can you know it? Do you believe it? Can you feel it? Can you sense it? The day is coming when we're going to be raised up with Him in glory. You shall appear with Him. Do you believe He's coming back again? It's closer than ever before, I can tell you that. I believe He has buried my past. I believe He has taken me and hidden me in the present. And I believe that He will resurrect me in the future with a glorious body. See, Jesus is my past. Jesus is my present. He is the great I am. And Jesus is my future. It's the only hope we got. Set your minds on hearts and things above. I am hidden in him. and The devil can't have me. I am hidden in him. And this world has no claim on me. Set your focus on him. He is all you need. He is your past. He is your present. And he is your future. Therefore, Put to death whatever belongs to your earthly nature. Therefore, put to death whatever belongs to your earthly nature. Things like sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, greed, which is idolatry. And because of these things, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways. You used to, but you died. You used to walk in these ways in the life that you once lived, but now, now you must rid yourself of these things. Put to death. See, I, I don't know how to really say it very articulately, poetically, or lyrically. I know how to say it spiritually, really. You know, that's, and I, the truth is, folks, you're better off dead. Listen, you're better off dead. Dead to your former ways of thinking. Dead to your former way of living. Dead to your earthly selfish ambitions. Dead to your lust and your evil desires and your greed. Lust, uh, dead to your deceitful ways, to your lies. Dead to your drug abuse. Dead to your anger. You're better off dead. Dead to your depression. Dead to your despair. You're better off dead. Dead to your impurity, dead to your rage, dead to your immoral impulses, dead to your judgment, dead to your deep-rooted embitterment. This is not who you are. This is who you were. You once lived like that. Not anymore. You died. Christ lives in you. Fills you with the Holy Spirit of God you might have the power of the Holy Spirit to live the life He desires and has willed for you. You're an overcomer. You're more than a conqueror. I don't follow my ways anymore. I follow His ways. I died to myself. I was better off dead. And so are you. When every part of your flesh is screaming for the crack pipe and you find a friend to help you through, that's dying to self. When you're teased and you're ridiculed about your faith and you bite your tongue and you don't get into senseless arguments and debates, that's dying to self. You're better off dead. When you're forgotten or you're neglected, you weren't invited to the party, and 
And you don't hurt from the insult because your heart is full of joyfulness and happiness, who you are in the Lord. That's dying to self. When you give advice to others and they disregard it, or your opinions are mocked and you refuse to let anger burn in your heart, that's dying to self. When you lovingly and patiently bear the chaos and the disorder that is going on all around you and you remain calm and well-mannered, that's dying to self. And you're better off dead. When you deal with all the spiritual abnormalities that are around you, all the different types of personalities and deal with people's tardiness and annoyances, and you endure it like Jesus endured it, that's dying to self. When you never care to record or brag about your own accomplishments or itch for the praises from other people, when you can truly love being unknown, That's dying to self. And you are better off dead. When you can look at your brother and sister and watch them prosper, and you can honestly rejoice with them, even though your needs are greater, that's dying to self. And when you're content with any food, any offering, any climate, any governmental society that you might find yourself living, that's dying to self. And you're better off dead. When you can take some correction, instruction, humbly submit inwardly, and outwardly, with no resentment, no rebellion rising up in your heart, that's dying to self. When you can uh, withstand the attacks on your character and not seek your own revenge and your own vengeance, that's dying to self. And you're better off dead. When you want God to have more control over your life than you want to keep for yourself, that's dying to self. That's practical theology. That's theocentric psychology. That's, I died. I don't do that which I want. I do that which God wants. Even when it feels difficult, even when it is difficult, even when it hurts, I've died to do what God desires. Because it's not about you anymore. If you've been raised with Christ and are hidden in him and hope for his future glory, it's not about you anymore. You died. And therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion and kindness and humility and gentleness and patience. Kind of sounds like the fruits of the Spirit, doesn't it? Kind of sounds like the Holy Spirit of God is manifesting itself in your life. And where the places that you walk, there's gentleness in the places that you walk. There's humility in the places that you walk. There's kindness in the place where you walk. There's forgiveness in the places where you walk. There's peace and calmness in the places that... Because it's not you. You die. This is Jesus manifesting very Holy Spirit of God 
bearing with each other, forgiving one another. Forgive as the Lord has forgave you. And over all of these things, put on love. Wow. Which binds them all together in perfect unity. Wow. Give me some of that. Because I know we need some unity. I know we need some peace. Love brings it all together in perfect unity. So here's your next one. Bring to life. Instead of put to death, bring to life. Now what? Right? Now what am I going to bring to life? Remember that he's addressing believers. Those that have been raised up with Christ. And that's you. And if we can't live like this among ourselves, try. It's never going to happen with unbelieving world and darkness. If we can't live like this among ourselves. This is what he's saying among ourselves. Right? Put away the anger. Put away the rage. Put away, and put on these... Bring to life a compassion, a forgiveness. This fellowship is supposed to look different than the world. Isn't it? It's supposed to look different than the world. Why? Because our minds are not set on this world. Our minds are set on things above. Our hearts are set on things above. I'm not storing up treasures here on earth. I'm storing up treasures up in heaven. I've died to self. How do I do that? Well, in the midst of chaos, I express calm. In the midst of disunity, I bring love. In the midst of hatred, I preach forgiveness. It's so unlike the world. So unlike the world, as it should be. You breathe life. You breathe love. You breathe compassion, mercy, and grace. This is what ties it all together. Listen, what makes you think you're so special? What makes you think you're so special? Well, God chose me. God chose me. That's why I think I'm special. What makes you think you're so special? Say it. God chose me. What makes you think you're so special? Say it. God chose you. God chose you. He invited you to the party. Will you uninvite someone? He invited you to the party. He invited you to be a part of his plan. To be saved. To be baptized. To be resurrected. To be part of a glorious heaven. To walk with him. He invited you. He called you out, and he separated you out. You did not choose him. He chose you. And if you know anything about the uh, way in which a rabbi gets his flock, or those that are around him, that's entirely the opposite way. Jesus turned the world upside down from the very get-go. You did not choose me. You did not ask me to be your rabbi. I said, follow me. I chose you. Come, follow me. Come, follow me. What makes you so special? God chose you. He chose you. You are highly favored and blessed. So what makes you think you are so holy? What makes you think you're so holy? Which God said you are. You have been called out, separated out. You are holy. I've set you apart for my good use. This separates you and makes you very different from all the others in the world that he has not revealed himself to. He's chosen you to work with you, to dwell within you, that you might be the hands and the feet and the ambassadors to a dark world that does not know this God. Do you know this God? Do you live like it or are you just reading the book? Do you live like it or are you just showing up in church on Sunday? See, I have no righteousness of my own. 
I have no merit to claim. I've got nothing. I've got nothing. I have zero awards to prove that I'm holy. I've got zero awards to prove that I'm worth anything to him. The closer I get to him, the more I realize how unworthy I am. I don't become more holy. I don't become more righteous. I become more humble and realize all that he has done for a wretch like me. And yet, he chose me. And yet, he chose you. I know you. And he chose you. He invited you. Are you kidding me? And then he wants us to work together? As only he can do it. That's why it can't be about us. We have to die to ourselves. How remarkable is this God that he thinks this much of you? <laughs> that he would select you. That he would elect you. That he would designate you holy. And set apart. You are dearly loved and precious in his sight. I know that there are times you think that you're ugly and you're not worth much. But he thinks you're beautiful. I know there are times when you think you're just filthy, dirty. You know your own mind. And yet he washes you clean. I know your sins are as red as scarlet, like a flashing neon sign. And he makes you white as snow. Listen, I know you think they're ugly. I know you think they're ugly. He thinks they're beautiful. I know you think they're diseased and disgusting and dirty. He washes them clean. He washes them clean. And I know that you can see all their sins like a blinking neon sign. But he can make them white as snow. He loves you, and he cares for you. He will help you, and he will guide you. And listen, he loves them. He cares for them. He will help them. And he will guide them, too. He will separate us from the wolves of the world. He will clothe us with compassion. He will teach us kindness. He will give us opportunity to express our humility and our humanity. He will guide us into all gentleness. He will provide us with the patience that is required to deal with a world that we do not have our minds set upon. This is God at work within us, reviving us and raising us up, separating us and bringing us into new life. The life we exemplify must look different than the world. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you were called to peace and be thankful. We practice forgiveness. Can you forgive? 
can you forgive? I don't know. Can, can you forgive Trump? Maybe in this crowd, can you forgive Biden? <laughs> can you forgive your mom? Can you forgive your dad? Your siblings? What does it look like to die to self? And not, what, what, not want what you want, but want what God wants for your own benefit. We love each other. We pray for each other. We care for each other. We are a chosen priesthood, a royal family. And we're thankful and grateful for each other. Right here, this community of New Life Alliance Church, this bigger community of one body in Christ. If we can't be different than the world, there's no hope. And what's so great is you have practical instruction on how to live, how to do it. But you can't just read the book. You have to live the life. Let's do something a little liturgical. Would you stand with me, please? Time is it? Okay. A responsive reading. And your response, I think I have a slide. So, in case you're, yeah. Thanks be to God. It's a responsive reading. Your response is, thanks be to God. Whenever I raise my hand. Heavenly Father, you are our strength and our shield. Your steadfast love endures forever. We are each members of one body, and may the peace of God reign in our hearts and minds as we live out being the church. May your word dwell within us as we teach generation to generation the wonder of your works. You govern the angels and oversee the majesty of all your creation. You have given us grace, mercy, forgiveness that we may know how to give it away. Through the sacrifice of your son Jesus, you have adopted us in people holy and acceptable to you. You have delighted to make a way where there seemed to be no way. Father in heaven, I would pray that you would receive our worship our praise and our thanksgiving unto you. We honor you, we adore you, we love you, we praise you, we glorify you, we exalt you, we lift you high. Father, we set our hearts upon you, we set our minds upon you. Guide and lead, instruct and teach us as we humbly yield ourselves to you. We come before you in the name of your Son, Amen. God bless you. you. May be seated in his presence. Hey, check this out.
what makes you think you're so special? Would you stand with me, please, for the reading of the benediction? This will end our social media, Facebook time and YouTube time. But those that wish to attend our annual meeting, uh, you'll simply just need to go to your email and click on uh, the New Life Alliance link that is there, and we will catch up with you on Zoom. And so there you go for those that are at home and wanting to be part of our meeting. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, Present your requests to God. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Go, serve your God. God bless you.